Good evening, everyone. Welcome to your FL Black Box ahead of game week 34. The exciting double game week is finally uh, upon us. Uh, one of us is on a free hit. It's not me. It's Mr. Andy North, <laughs> my special guest tonight. How are you? I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I am. I am okay. I a little bit stressed. A okay. little bit stressed with you know yeah. with with seeing people's free hit teams and seeing what people can can build. But I don't think my team's a million miles off. You know, kind of. You know, people are, are taking punts left, right, and centre, aren't they? On Matetas yeah. and Kunas and Sarabias. You never really know what you're going to get from from those. The big one was was Harland. Like I'd yeah. obviously be having him, and if you want a free hit, you're probably not. And now he's got a bit of an injury, so I'm a bit, bit less, bit less excited now. We haven't really had much of an update on it, have we? Apart from the fact that he asked to come off. So obviously that's always mm. interesting when a player actually asked to come off. Him and KDB both did the same, didn't they? But I mean, the thing is with the City game, it's not till the Wednesday. So we can, or is it Thursday? It might even be. So it's we're waiting for quite a long time for that to happen, and you know anything can change in all that time, can't it? So. Yeah, it's not ideal, though, for all those non-free hitters, I wouldn't say. Oh, he says while well, rubbing his hands together. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's exciting times. And, you know, I haven't got the wild cards either. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it and thinking, what, 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 what chips, chips do you, do you have? have? Oh, one more time. Well, honestly, <laughs> one more time with that joke. And I'm going to I'm going to flip. Yeah, I've got, I've got nothing. I've got nothing left, as Ian Beale uh, oh, famously, God. famously said. So yeah, I'm trying to work out what, what to do. And I've actually lost a player who I'm going to want back for 35 anyway. So trying to walk that tightrope between... Yeah. Who was that? Son? Yeah, Son. Son yeah. is gone um, for uh, yeah the person who's the who's the, the um, poster boy for this episode, Mr. Mr. Eze. Yeah, nice. Eze win. Eze win. Yeah, Eze win. Eze win. Yeah. Send you all those double puns <laughs> and you went with Eze win. Terrible. Mark and I have this running joke uh, every time a double comes around that we're going to call the episode double trouble because everyone if you look at all the streams across the channels there's always double <laughs> trouble scout are famous for it whenever joe gets the chance to name a stream at double game week double trouble every time well i think i sent you double entendre well we thought mark was on or i sent you menage yeah 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 very very interesting uh no sponsor this week no one's given us any money so i'm not going to plug anyone uh, let's just go straight into uh game week 33 <laughs> points we didn't do an episode last week mark was ill last mm. minute unfortunately couldn't join us again uh tonight it was going to be the three of us but uh, he's yeah he's having a bit of a rough time at the moment so yeah hope things get better for you soon uh, mark but it feels ages since we, we've done a done a black box I'm, I'm a bit out of practice but let's recap what was an all right game week for me, 79 points, small green arrow, uh, Raya in goal uh, with one, Gabriel with zero, Bradley with one. Here we go, back to the defence. But Vardiol <laughs> finally <laughs> coming through. I was ruining the purchase of Vardiol after his 45 minutes and yellow cards in the last game. Uh, but then for some reason, played Real Madrid, looked absolutely amazing, backed it up with another goal uh, in, in the game. Uh, who are they playing? They're against... Luton against Luton. Luton, yeah. Yes. Bradley has been the disappointing one uh, now, but he's only 4 million, so, so we'll let him off. Uh, Salasson, Saka, all incredibly disappointing. They're the three big hitters that I kept on the wild card, and none of them have, have done anything, really, uh, yeah. since since I kept them. And it's Palmer, who I captained last week for his five points against Sheffield United. <laughs> I did the same. Yeah. 26 points against... Mental against Everton. I, I was watching that game just thinking it's absolutely ridiculous. What did you make of the whole penalty fiasco? Oh, God. <laughs> I What made me laugh about it was, mm. like, Chelsea have been looking every week for, like, positive news stories yeah. about them. Yep. They finally get a really good win, and everything I saw about it afterwards was all about that penalty. And about, it was all about the reactions of Pochettino and about those players. And I just thought, they just can't have a good week, can they? You know, they have a massive win, and it's all about the penalty taker. And to be fair, I know what they were thinking. They were thinking, "You've had your goals. Yeah. <laughs> You've had your hat. You got your hat trick. Let us kind of, like, yeah, exactly. Let's let us kind of like get off the mark, uh, especially someone like Jackson. But you know, Palmer's the penalty taker, and it's up to him who takes it. It's not up to them to wrestle it off him. So, yeah, I um, I, I thought it was a bit mad, to be fair. But I mean, Palmer, what I, we we've gone through seasons where we've had Kane being cheap. We've yep. had Mares, Vardy, like um, Ramsey that year as well. Like 
Palmer's on a different level at the moment. It, it's just ridiculous. Four goals in a game. I know. <laughs> like, just unbelievable. And only one of them being a penalty as well. Like, it, it, yeah, just ridiculous. My mate spoke to me the other day and said, um, he's, he's a bit of a casual player, yeah. Uh, and he <laughs> said, um, he logged on two minutes before, was looking through midfielders he could bring in and went, oh, I don't have Palmer yet. So we brought in Palmer two minutes before. <laughs> I know, bless him. It was, it was frustrating though, because... Like we, we didn't captain obviously, and yeah. I thought with Haaland and, and Salah with those two home games, I thought they would, and they and they did rightly dominate the, the captains' poll. And yeah. you know, I haven't really seen too many people with with Palmer captains, but he was still over 100 percent EO at, at my at my level, shall we say? Yeah. So his his points were a red arrow for me. Each one that that went in, um, again, I think that just shows that there's just a lot more engaged people out there mm, or people yeah, that just left the captain on him <laughs> accidentally yeah. from from last week but I still think Palmer even, even in previous seasons I don't think he ever would have reached a level where he's still causing red arrows at kind of 500k yeah true wherever I am yeah, yeah so well yeah um was it Greyhead did that table the other day didn't he mm. about um is it is FPL getting harder mm. and in almost every aspect it looks like it is like the average um Budget, you know, the average team value of every team has gone up. The average points has gone up. The average, everything just seems to be getting harder. So just everybody seems to be getting more points this year. Yeah. Yeah. Or which, year on year. Which, you know, in a lot of ways is good, right? It makes the game more more competitive. I think we're still stuck maybe in the ways of if we don't get a top 10K finish, that still feels like a, a failure. And we've talked about it on on previous black box in previous seasons. You know, is the, is the top 100K the new top 10k and, and all that stuff yeah, yeah. you still want to be aiming for the t- when, when we put in as much effort as we do you still want to be aiming for that that top 10k i still see that as like the kind of the the target even though i've only met yeah. it once in the last four seasons or or something <laughs> um how, how many times are you this is your all right mm-hmm. i saw that coming. yeah <laughs> no, let's not start about rank guys all right <laughs> yeah those in glass houses uh, and exactly and yeah so do you think palmer is the greatest is the greatest budget option of all time well, I mean, he's still got games to go. That's the if thing. If he wins he's the Golden got, Boot as well, he's, he's still level, got, he's still got two double game weeks to go as well. Yeah. Like he is, he is just absolutely ridiculous. And I think because no one really saw it coming. Like, mm. no, I mean, I, I suppose you could say the same about like, like I said, a Mares or a, a Ramsey from all those years ago. But I think if he carries on like he is until now, until the end of the season, I think he is. Yeah, and yeah. that's not recency bias. I I can't remember a season quite like this. Like I said, Mares, Ramsey, that they were good, but. Palmer scoring four goals just seems mm. just mental. In a like kind every of home struggling, game. in a struggling team as well. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they are climbing yeah. up the league now, but for large yeah. parts of the seasons, they have been they have been struggling. And yeah, I mean, Mares, you know, he got his massive haul when he, he was five five, wasn't he? But then they they won yeah. the league that year. They can't call them a, a struggling struggling team. Spurs were a top four, top five side. Yeah, um, and Arsenal were right with Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, elsewhere, Haaland was captain with, with uh, 10. Uh, obviously, double to 20. Darwin, oh my God. <laughs> Why have I still got... I'm just waiting for that haul that it's just never, ever, ever going to gonna come. Darwin, Darwin rested tonight or dropped? <sighs> he has been so poor mm. the last few games. And Gakpo's was, done quite I well. I think it was dropped. Yeah, I, I think, think he was think dropped, dropped, dropped rather than rested. I think it's it's the same, though. He plays one of the, of the two games. Mm. He, probably, he probably gets 80 minutes and 30, which... He was yeah. probably going to get anyway. I'm I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, it'd be better if he was coming into this with <laughs> some semblance of form. Every time, every time we bring him in and we think this can't fail, this can't fail, <laughs> and it just seems to, doesn't it? it just, I, I know. I know. We always talk about it, but honestly, the volume of chances that man, that man misses. He hasn't had a double digit haul since game week twenty one though, and he's had three all season. Like it is, it is poor. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyway, he's in. I'm guessing he's not in your your free hit team. Um, the other good thing that happened to me this week was Isak coming in because I wouldn't have had him. Well, I wouldn't have had him or Vardy if I hadn't wildcarded a few weeks ago. So it was nice to finally see some <laughs> some returns on on that. I'd definitely be in a worse position if I hadn't wildcarded a few weeks ago. And yeah, obviously that's kind of the the minimum of what you expect from one. But yeah, I think I think it was it was the right decision to play it. So. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, this is your team. Uh, you had a, a a couple of people coming in for you as well, who um, 
<laughs> we've been enemies in the past. Oh, I did have a few people coming in for me. So I had Neto coming in for Ariola for zero. I mean, points. that's funny to start. So that yeah. was great. Uh, I had Gabriel with zero. Gusto got me six. So he was one of my transfers in this week. Reggion with eight. I was very happy with that. Yeah, uh, so he, well, he's quite, the one quite, I was thinking of. He's been an absolute yeah. <laughs> disaster for he's, you. Well, yeah, but last week he got nine. But I had Zabani coming in for one point because Tony didn't play one minute. Tony. I was, I, 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 <laughs> there's not many moves that go as badly as Tony has gone. Like, even in the first week, I was like, God, Moon is outscored Tony so much. And I was like, but, you know, it's one week. I got Tony for, for, <laughs> for a longer time than that. And this was the game I was looking at. I really wanted him for Sheffield United at home before I hit my free hit. And he didn't even play. Didn't even. Do you know what I love I about your free hit this week? That he's going to come right. back in <laughs> into your team. Next oh, he's week. gone then, though. He's gone then, though. <laughs> oh, then you've got the wild card, haven't you? Yeah. No, I haven't. Oh, got I haven't got the wild card. Oh no, you haven't. No, no, no you're it's gonna be, Tony. Tui, you're going to get Tui stuck with him. Was... You're going to no, get. I'm not. You're going to get stuck no, with him. You're going to get an injury, and you're going to get stuck with him to the end of the season. This is what always happens with players like that. Guaranteed. No, he's gone. I'll be even take a hit. I don't care. I'll take a hit to get rid of him because he's not even playing. Like there's no point keeping him. Like that's the thing. It's not like he's underperforming, like say Darwin. He's just not playing. Um, so yeah, so Sabatini came in for one <laughs> point. So my two auto subs, the, the the amount of jam I've seen from other teams and their auto subs, and I get one point from yeah. two players. Uh, and then Saka two, Salah two, Garnacho four. So all my 50-50s just aren't working at the moment. Um, I went for Elanga over Morgan Gibbs White on wildcard. That went terribly badly. <laughs> went Tony instead of Munez. That you got went rid of really him. badly. <laughs> went Garnacho over Gordon. Oof. That went really bad. Gordon went off at half time and then fell out with the manager for liking a post about why he went off. I, yeah, so Garnacho got four, Palmer 26, which hurt me, uh, Son with one, and then Harlem with 20. So it was actually Reggion that helped me. Mm. Reggion and Gusto were obviously good at the back there. But yeah, it's weird. I've been, it's like death by a thousand cuts. I was 36K mm. about four weeks ago, and I've just got slowly got little red arrows, and I'm down to 60K now. Still okay with the free hit to go and the bench boost, and you know my team's kind of well set for after the free hit, but... Yeah, it's, it's the last couple of weeks. Just every 50-50 seems to have um, <laughs> seems to have killed me a little bit. Yeah. But there you go. What can you do? Like it's just you know how it goes sometimes. The Tony one, I messaged you not that long ago saying, "Did I make an error getting Tony in? Was there something <laughs> I wasn't seeing there?" And it's just uh, you can't call it that he just at least not Rodrigo Muniz has stopped scoring because there was a yeah, point when he was scoring like every week and you were thinking of getting him instead so mm-hmm. at least uh, at least that uh, talking about jam did you see the highest points uh, this this week oh was it the they captain triple captain foden yeah and triple vice captain palmer palmer yeah but you know who came oh. off the bench for foden as well <laughs> Tyrick Mitchell Gordon. with his 12 points oh was it <laughs> <laughs> the legend legend so that that Foden missing out got them, what's that? 20, 26 times 2, 52, plus 12. 68 nice, points with one with one player missing out. That, <laughs> oh, you've got, you got to love this game, haven't you? Got to love it. Uh, Mark's team, 72. Another kind of decent-ish week uh, for him. Uh, Neto in bench goal with jam. a zero. Yeah, did he did he get a bench play this week? He oh, we did. Got, he had got, Bailey come on. Oh, we got Bailey on, didn't he, for Foden? Yeah, of course he did. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Gusto, Saliba, Saka Palmer, Salah Bailey, uh, Darwin, Solanke and Haaland. He does not have the free hit chip available, so he's in a similar position um, to to me. Um, he's yeah, he's got some players in place. He'll he'll be all right. I reckon he'll probably get nine or nine or ten out. Similar similar yeah. to I will. Um, so yeah, he'll be, he'll be relatively happy uh, with that. He's like, I think he's just outside the top 10k now. Yeah. So yeah, he's um he's pretty happy with that. Great in the good. Lots of red arrows uh, this week. Oh. Um, oh, I meant to oh, highlight you and I highlight oh. Fabio instead. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I can Basic, see why you yeah, get confused. Basically, <laughs> basically the same person. Uh, not yeah, sure exactly. Why, not sure why Finn's got zero uh, as total points either, but uh, we can we can blame Greyhead for for that one. Uh, I am now below Marco, um, who I've been ahead of for a while. He's seven points ahead of me uh, going into this. Uh, I'm going to finish in the bottom three. I think is is kind of the um, yeah is the reality. I'm still clinging on in the in the elite 64 to not get relegated. In that, that's the main target for me this season. If I can avoid relegation, 
from that, um, I'll be happy. Uh, I mean, you're having a great season, but you're still kind of mid mid table. Praz is the closest to you. Yeah. Seven points I behind think, Praz. You can. I mean, you, this, take him. this this could all change around a bit after free hit, couldn't it? Mm. Like you know, if if I play my free hit cards right and it all comes off, that could be easily be 20, 30 points more than a few people. Yeah, so you've got to be we'll pretty. You've got to be. I've seen your free hit team. I think you should be pretty confident about getting a decent oh. green with that. Oh, it's yeah. the nicest thing you've ever said to me, that is. <laughs> uh, Mark is third in this league. He'll be trying to chase down Ben Krillin, uh, who is top. He's still in the top 1K, but not by much. 934 of him. Mm. Pretty much everyone went for Harlan this week. A couple of Salas uh, for uh, John Ballantyne and if your guns. But yeah, no Palmer. No Palmer captain. Did we Did we miss a trick there? Uh, mm, I think Harland at home to Luton. If you went down the route of owning Harland, I think you had to go for captain against Luton. I mean, that's what I was doing. I, I literally just kept looking at that fixture and thinking I need Harland for it. So I was always going to captain Harland for that fixture. So I don't think we missed a trick, but I think Palmer at home from now on just mm. has to be thought about, you know, in the captaincy discussion every week. Question for you, the leaks. We know we know the leaks. They've been rumbling on all season. Uh, yeah, we didn't get any 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 interesting information on our WhatsApp group before anyone before anyone else. <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, about no. uh, it was funny. I saw Walker start against Real Madrid, and I was thinking, oh, yeah. I wonder, if, wonder if Mark's got a little tip off about <laughs> oh, about Walker being back. Uh, no, probably not. Are we making jokes about that now? Yeah, maybe enough time. Enough yeah, time's gone. It's fine. Um, obviously, this was a, a weird one because we got the leak that Harland and Foden both started, and then what happened? It turned out Foden wasn't starting. Mm. Uh, Harlan did well, 12 points, obviously then outscored by by Palmer. Two questions for you. One, do we need to stop trusting the leaks? Because now Pep's come out and said the leaks were wrong, big smile on his face. Mm -hmm. I think they were do they were obviously doing something to kind of weed that weed that out. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked. Um and and two, do you think that that leak kind of did make us go against Captain Palmer? I mean, if we hadn't got a leak, I'd actually was I was I was on Salah. I was very, very oh, tempted to go for Salah. Seb was the same, yeah. And when Harlem was was kind of confirmed to start, I I kind of moved it, moved it over to him. Um, but I never really considered Palmer from from being completely honest. Yeah. But I imagine there were some people out there who who were. But yeah, what do you think about like the the validity of leaks now? Are we questioning I them mean, a bit more. I said it to you, didn't I? I said it in the chat and said this seems like they have tried to le uh, like kind of sneak out and say kind of try and find who is doing the leaks yeah. because they put out a fake leak and then look all of a sudden it's not right and obviously then it came out saying oh it was that he wasn't fit and actually he, he didn't pass a really late fitness test wasn't it mm. and then obviously they asked pep and pep was like no he was never meant never to start gonna play. And he was like oh here we go i i think yeah you've probably got to take everything with a pinch of salt anyway but i think we've kind of got into a real habit of just a lot of our moves are determined mm. by leaks and if those leaks are valid and they are 100 percent correct then yeah, you've got to kind of go for the players that you know 100% are going to start because you know they're 100% going to start. Whereas mm -hmm. the ones later on in the week, you you still have that uncertainty, don't you? So I, I get it. I was always on Haaland anyway. So that that it didn't actually change my moves. I made my moves about three minutes before we got the leak because I was just fed up waiting. Oh I didn't, yeah. I just didn't I, want to wait. I remember, and yeah. then you saw the Foden news, didn't you? Yeah, I know. You were so get I him. was going to get yeah, Foden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, no, I just can't wait. I can't do it. And then it obviously came out of his play and I was just like, oh, brilliant. And I was going to lose Saka for him. Mm. So yeah, I'm quite glad I didn't do that in the end. But I I think it's one of those things where you enjoy them when you've got them and when you don't have them, you're just like, oh, well, I don't have them. But there are people out there that just complain no matter what we do, yeah. you know, whether we get them, when we don't get them, when it goes wrong, when it goes right. So I, I'm not fussed either way. I think I would probably prefer a world where we don't get them mm. because I just think... It does seem a little bit unfair that we're getting them. But in the same respect, if you look hard enough, you get what you want. So, What would you do if, uh, so, you know, we obviously know the the accounts that kind of that, that do this stuff. And I, I hate myself for using them because I don't want to use them. But mm -hmm. you kind of would be hamstringing yourself if you, if you didn't. Yeah. So we're, we're going to if we got them. But say the leaks were, it's a hypothetical example, say they were 75% right. Mm -hmm. But you knew there was a 25% chance that they were wrong. <laughs> would you still continue to use them in the same way or would you just completely write them no, off? I don't, I think so, yeah. I mean... Because <laughs> that's where it could get to, right? Like if, if the clubs are going to start putting out conflicting information, some people have got the right 
ones. Some people haven't have got the wrong one. And you've got someone who is mostly getting it right, but there's always that slight chance you might get it wrong. You yeah. can't really use them anymore, can you? No, not really. I think you'd have to have 100% to, have, mm. to, to use them at all, really. Uh, and also, if you're basing all of your moves on it, then you're going to get burned more times than you think you're not. But then some people made moves to get Foden, and then because they got Foden, they got really good bench jab, and obviously it all worked <laughs> yeah. out okay. So you off the bench. it can happen. <laughs> exactly. I mean, question for you, though. If you had somebody jump in your DMs, and they were what they were, 100%, they worked for the club, and they gave you a leak. Would you share it or not? Absolutely not. I've been ve- I've been very very <laughs> clear. I've been very clear about this, like from from the start. Um, I, 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 I firstly because because I, I do stuff with the Premier League, they mm. they hate leaks. Like the leaks are like the, the worst things for them. I can't be I can't be seen to be sharing inside knowledge about about stuff. For clarity, I don't have inside knowledge. I've never I've never had any inside knowledge about any. I didn't even get that Walker news. So I don't even know where Mark got that from. But it definitely wasn't <laughs> wasn't anyone I'm I'm privy to. Um, if if I had if I had confirmed news, I from the club. No, I, I, well, I would, I wouldn't share it because I, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to share it, share it publicly. I, I wouldn't. No. I'd be absolutely terrified that it would be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because you, this is my point. You, especially now, I, I don't think I'd yeah. ever be a hundred percent certain, unless it's yeah. Pep ringing me up, being like, "By the way, even then, I don't trust him. <laughs> he can't trust anyone." <laughs> Until that lineup's out, you'd just be dreading it, wouldn't you? You'd yeah. be absolutely dreading it and thinking, "Oh God, anything could happen. This could be wrong. I'm going to get mm. pelters everywhere." Yeah. Uh, no matter how many times you get it right, you just need one and. That's it. Well, I had so it. No, I mean, I, I said this. I said this when when Walkergate kind of came out. I, I had someone who I'd been in contact with regularly um, message me and said, Livramento starts today. And so I played him, didn't tell anyone, and he was benched. And I was like, well, I'm bloody glad <laughs> I didn't go and tell everyone that he was playing. Oh, was and that then, Ed? Yeah, could, could well have been. Yeah. I, had, I had a similar one this week. Um, a, a guy that uh, I think watches, watches Black Box. Um, we, we've exchanged yeah. messages. He messaged me and said, oh, I've got a good authority. Vardio doesn't start. And I just thought, you know what? I've been burnt by this again. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to fall for it. Or, or, you know, not even fall for it, but I'm not going to trust someone who oh, I've never had information like that before. And, and Vardio ended up starting and I, and I played him. But It's ignorance is bliss though, isn't it? You're better off just not having that information. Because as soon as you've read it, it's like brilliant. Now I've yeah. got to kind of well, I was, act This was like 10 minutes before and... the deadline. And, and I was thinking, if I now bench Vardio against Luton, everyone's yeah. going to be coming at me in the same way they came at, at Mark. But how the hell can I verify that <laughs> that this is genuine... I think like it's my team. I'm happy to take the risk with my own team, but when it comes to passing on that information, it's yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, they're having an inside joke between one of their ball leaks and a broken tap. Yeah, we wish sexy beast. <laughs> <laughs> Gen- genuinely, <laughs> on my dog's <laughs> life, I do not get like l- regular leaks. No. The odd one that from like and and in fact of all the leaks I've had this year, I'd say over half of them have been wrong, and they were the two that I had. <laughs> yeah, Vardy and wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Genuinely, just true. get random people in your DMs. Like I've got DM requests, or whatever, and I just go in there every now and have again. You? And people go in, yeah, because uh, yeah, you know, like like when Who's you requesting people... new DMs, bots. No, not bots. Only fans, people, girls. People... No, yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> people wanted to get into <laughs> FPL mode. Yeah. Uh, very good. Krellin time, uh, my my favourite segment, talking about Ben stuff that Ben Krellin posts, which is always interesting uh, at Ben Krellin. The news we had was it today was about the today. yeah the the FA Cup uh, and talking about the kind of the new format for this, and it looks like we're not going to have blanks now caused by the the FA Cup uh, quarterfinals for the next six seasons, which Ben points out normally cause between four and six blanks. Obviously, makes planning more crucial because you've got to prepare for those. And also it makes it a bit more fun down the line because then you have the doubles that we have um, now. Um, the FA Cup may cause blanks, but there's still a bit of uncertainty around around that. Um, but the EFL Cup final uh, will still cause the blanks with, with two. Um, so Ben says we're only likely to get two blanks caused by fixture clashes next season. And there's a chance we'll get as many as six. Uh, we got 10.5 blanks caused by fixture clashes this season. So eight less blanks. Eight less potential double game, well, not potential double games, but potential double fixtures later on in the season. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Well, firstly, what do you think of that? And secondly, do you think FPL needs to kind of change and adapt? I I think it 
in some ways, obviously it hurts us because this is where, as soon as you get in the second half of the season, all the blanks and all the doubles is where you kind of gain a mm. lot of rank because people that maybe don't take as much time to look at FPL as we do, don't know to invest in certain players early on and things like that. So and I think save that your chips, hurts us unlike that way. What, I, what I've done this season. Exactly. <laughs> but in other ways, like it is so boring leading up to say a double game week or a blank game week, and you can only invest in certain players. Having the whole field open pretty much the whole year will actually be quite exciting. Mm. You know, having play, you know, having players where we haven't been able to invest in, say, like a Spurs for the last couple of weeks because we know they got a blank this week if you're not on free hit. So being able to invest in those players a bit more, I think, will be quite fun. I do think maybe the chips have to change a little bit. I think like something like say a bench boost, if there's only you say like one or two double game week weeks, I think it's just a bit a bit boring. Like maybe they could change that or even just get rid of it. Or I think Praz uh, tweeted saying bench boost in game week one will be incredibly popular. Mm. And it's just little things like that where you think maybe they could change it, but I don't think they will. But I think something like that may have to change. Free hit, I think it was change it stay the same. Triple caps will stay the same, but with three chips for maybe two big weeks, I don't know. It, it, yeah, I think maybe the excitement in the second half of the season might go a little bit, but it will help casuals a lot more, I think. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's all pretty, pretty much bang on. I've always been in favour of not having chips be saved until the end of the season for, for everyone. I think it's I think it's restrictive in the sense mm. that it's, you know, everyone's using free hits this week or bench boost in 37. There's no variety. It's nice to think that it could actually open up now. We could actually be thinking about using chips at, at different parts of the season. Mm. Um, so, I mean, that, that is a positive way. But at the same time, I do like double game weeks. I do like the fact yeah. that you've always got that hope that you're going to hit a massive haul from yeah. one or two players that can turn your season around. I mean, I'm looking at this this week and thinking, you know, we're seeing people talk about like Brereton Diaz, aren't we? And, you know, yeah, I've got know. Eze captain and Kuna's coming in and he's like the golden child. There's, there's so much sort of excitement and buzz around them. And it, it kind of is, is why... <laughs> I enjoy this is it. kind of why we we were saying that that blank game week twenty nine, why everybody was like, yeah, but you wait till you you know you could use it in a in a big double game week, and it just seems more fun, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I th I think they I, I've always been an advocate that the, they they should be first and second half of the season. Yeah, I like chips. That, yeah. Um, you know, if, if they're going to continue with those, which I su I assume they are, they need to find a way to make the chips more accessible for people and to actually feel like they're having a bit of an impact. Because at the moment, it just mm. feels if you've used them early you're like, oh, well, I haven't even got my triple captain to play later in the season. I'm going to just give up. Yeah. And that's where they're losing yeah, yeah. people. So I think they need to think mm. away about things like that. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit sad to see we're going to have less double game. Because it can be quite restrictive. You do end up with plans that don't change and end up getting in useless players and the, who do nothing and avoiding all the good ones. It's probably good for us in terms of we can get in this, this bigger pool of players that we can get now. But yeah, yeah. I think the buzz the buzz around it will be a shame to, to lose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, step, look out for what's going to happen with that uh, next season. Uh, let's take a look at some stats. All the stats we're going to be talking about today um, are from the Fantasy Football Scout members area, which Andy is a member of and does the Scoutcast. I am. Uh, and other streams with his best mate, Flappy J. Uh, and Seb also uh, takes oh. part. <laughs> <laughs> with his best mate Flappy J and Seb and Seb <laughs> Seb Seb's, Seb's around I sent I sent Seb a um, a note I took in my phone sometimes when I'm um, sleeping I wake up in the night I've had a dream right and I've got a uh, I've got a little notepad next to my bed where I write yeah, my ghost uh, ghost been visiting again there? yeah right <laughs> spooky ghost yeah write those down yeah. and uh, I wrote uh, sometimes I write the notes in my phone because I you know something's dark and or whatever and I had a I had a dream and I, I don't remember the dream. But I've written in my notes at like 4.30 a.m. And it says, uh, <laughs> um, dreamt they created a sustainable fantasy Premier League. Trent got the most points because he refused to travel. Seb loved it. <laughs> okay. Seb was a big fan. And I, I said it in that. And I vaguely remembered. That is that would be Seb all over, wouldn't it, that, that league? Is this going to be a new YouTube channel? It should be. Sustain you just describing your dreams. Sustainable Premier League. I reckon there's a mock of it. Well, it's why I started the notepad, because I have quite sort of like short story dreams. A lot of them involve like zombie invasions, or they're all, they're all quite weird. But I reckon there's, there's, a, there's a book deal for me out there somewhere. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, oh, yeah. this it's, is what happens when Mark's not here. Yeah, just... Uh, just descending to chaos. Uh, I haven't yeah. dreamt about you yet, unfortunately. I don't think. 
that's not true. <laughs> every every that's night, just <laughs> handing yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what I was talking about. I've gone off a massive tangent. Uh, data defense. Yeah, here's all the double game week teams. Um, Flared in, in yellow over the season. Not really many surprises. Arsenal top, obviously. Great, great defense. Although a shock loss against Aston Villa. Sheffield United down the bottom. Uh, Liverpool in third. Everton in fourth. Mm. What the hell happened to Everton in that game? Yeah, I know. I mean, well, Pickford obviously got two assists for, for two of the Palmer goals, didn't he? I, it, Everton being in fourth is quite interesting, but obviously we've got to wait to see whether there's any Branthwaite news because with him out, that would make mm. a big difference. Keane obviously came on. I don't think that's really what they want. I think they want Branthwaite to be fit. Pickford is quite a popular pick on free hit and and a lot of people are looking at bringing someone like Pickford in. I mean, who have they got? They've got Nottingham Forest and Liverpool at home. So at least they've got two home fixtures. Could get a clean sheet against Forest, but I'm not seeing one against Liverpool. So you're hoping for a, a, a clean sheet at least against Forest and then a couple of save points maybe. I I don't know. I'm not looking at their defence and thinking I want it. They're, they're perfect on, on my bench, but I'm not <laughs> looking at an Everton defender. I think a lot of people invested in Branthwaite and now obviously he might not be fit for that. Mikolenko is probably popular. He's tough, four, yeah. Mikolenko. So, yeah, it's interesting to see them there. But then I suppose the difference between the top two... I mean, even top three, and then from what fourth mm. to fifteenth is like negligible difference, isn't it? So it, that's quite an interesting one. It's more so that like Wolves are, you know, second worst in terms of defence over the season here. Mm. Whereas I see a lot of people going for say a Sar and Eight Nori or Kilmer, whatever it is. That Wolves defence has kind of been, you know, used a little bit, which is interesting. Defence has been tricky all season to to get mm. right in general. That's why I've ended up with double Arsenal and. Take away the, the Villa game. It's, it's been pretty pretty good since, since I brought those in. Liverpool defence, genuinely, they've been conceding conceding goals. But we've had good options there with Bradley and with Kelleher. Obviously, they're not factors for us now. You know, do we bring in Van Dijk, for example? He's a lot of money. Trent? What do you think about Trent? Well, Trent, obviously, starting tonight. It depends how many minutes he gets. Uh, by the way, someone in the chat says, uh, a guy says... As I'm oh my dream god, it's my book. dream. Get in touch. Yeah, oh, super chat. <laughs> you, you don't know what you I will send you my my dream. Some no, of some of the dreams some of the be dreams. Some dark stuff in there. Some of the dreams in my dream journal, honestly, are really, really <laughs> weird. Yeah. Um ironically, if you read his dream journal, you will never go to sleep again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think yeah, Liverpool's an interesting one. Trent is the one. If if you're on a free hit. And you want that low EO, high upside pick, Trent's the one. Surely you're going it's for it. Just, it's just whether you think he's got the minutes. Like, we were discussing this on Scoutcast, and I'm going to ask you the same question. Van Dijk, yep. guaranteed 180 minutes. Like, unless he gets injured, he's playing every minute of that double game week. Trent, best case scenario, gets what? 120? 130? Well, best case scenario, he plays both. 90 minutes. <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Best reality case scenario. So what's better? 120 minutes of Trent or 180 of Virgil van Dijk? 120 minutes of Trent. All day, every day. Not That is not even a debate for me. I wouldn't even be considering it. it, 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 it the fact Bradley's injured as well. He's not He's not going to want to play Gomez at right back in, in these games when they've just slipped up. It, it, they'll, they'll, they lose, they'll lose so much. Bradley's so good going forward. They did look good tonight with him back in there. But the problem is that's like, like I said, that's like best case scenario. Mm. But there is the worst case scenario where he gets maybe thirty minutes across the double. I just game. think Liverpool's defense is pretty ropey anyway. I think Fulham, Fulham's a t quite a tough game. Um, you, well, it depends what Fulham turn up, but they they have been. A, look at Spurs when they when they rolled up there and, and got beaten pretty comfortably. And then it's the derby, the Merseyside derby. And anyone, anything could happen in that as well. I, I would I would take Trent all day every day over Van Dijk. Mm. It's interesting though. I want to see his minutes tonight because I think if he goes off around 60, mm. I think he is more, I think he's going to be more popular on the free hit. And I, I do genuinely like him. Like this is what free hitters wanted. They wanted, you know, Harlan doubt. Brilliant. We got that. We wanted the kind of Bradley doubt because Trent, we wanted to kind of come back in and think, oh, actually we could maybe pick him. And I, I yeah, I mean, because so what Trent came on for about 40 minutes, didn't he? At the weekend. Yeah because Bradley went off injured yeah. and he did look a bit rusty, but he mm. was obviously getting into those positions, doing those trademark kind of across his, the floor Everything passes. he did was off. <laughs> All his passing yeah, was, was yeah. off. Yeah, his, yeah. yeah. He, he did look but rusty. Yeah. He's looked better tonight from what I've seen. 
So yeah, he's got to be he's got to be considered hundred percent got to be considered because he is one of those players that can just go off and he's going to go off. He's got more of a chance than that than Van Dyke. It's just whether you want sixty minutes less of him compared to Van Dyke, who's also got some goal threat in him as well. I'm I'm pretty likely to be bringing him in. I think as part of a, a minus four. Ooh. I just I need I just need people a bit different. What? I just What's need your long term plan. I don't have a I don't have one. <laughs> I just need points <laughs> in the short term. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I need I, I just need someone. I'm looking at, at picks this, this week oh. and think I just need someone. <laughs> anyone <laughs> that can come in and you know, some of the other moves I could, I could bring in like a Mikalenko or I could, you know, because I've got the, the Son money um, that I've, I've put into Eze. And, mm. you know, I do need to think about how I'm going to bring him back because obviously I'm going to want to, but it might be even be Saka that I lose, who I've been toying up losing anyway. And obviously with no double game yeah. weeks to come, um, he, he could be the one. But yeah, I don't know. I like, um, I, I like Trent. I mean, everyone likes Trent, but I, I really like Trent. I just, I just I, I've always had game. that mantra. I've always had so that mantra of you shouldn't really be investing in players where you're going to be fingers crossed every time the team sheet comes mm. out. And I, I will be. I'll, I'll be sat there waiting for the team sheet to come out and thinking, please, please, please. It's a free and obviously hit, if though. he's there, brilliant. It's a free yeah, hit. But, like, this is... Yeah, but Van, Van, Dijk, Van Dijk's going to play both those games. I do not have to worry. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's there. He's going to be getting the minutes. Yeah. Whereas Trent, I just, I, I, yeah, that's my biggest thing. Like, I get it's a free hit, but also... You you get you know what you're getting with Van Dyke, mm. and he could easily score a header like he did it in the last double game week. I, I just I just don't particularly like the games Liverpool defence. I, I think two yeah, away no, games agree with that, and yeah. two like not that great teams, but both a bit dodgy games. I I I wouldn't be surprised if they conceded in both, and then yeah, you're stuck with a, a Van Dyke nothing. Whereas Trent can always get a goal, get a free kick, get you a couple of assists. Um, the the only thing I will say we go with Trent if you are on a free hit not so much with you taking a hit and you don't have any kind of chip to get away from him again <laughs> but if you're on a free hit and the rest of your team looks solid then I, I kind of get it because you know you've got Trent there but the rest of your team's going to you know come out for you then that kind of makes sense but oh, so yeah. I, I don't particularly mind getting stuck with Trent for the rest of the season I know there's yeah. I mean, there's only really the double game week in, in 37. Money wise, though, I mean, he, he, is, money. He, he is a lot of money. Yeah. But yeah. I think, you know, it, <laughs> he, he it, 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 it would essentially be um, Trent over, over Saka. That's the way I look at yeah. it because they're kind of around the same price. Um, I mean, Robertson is, uh, we've just had a Rob, Rob Jones in the message room. We're going to talk about Robertson when we come to defenders, but that's the other, other way you can go. Maybe a bit safer um, mm. there. Although I'm not totally convinced of his minutes either because you've got no, Simicass um, exactly. there and oh, oh, Gomez. And Gomez. Left. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's look at the last six. Got to talk about Man United, bottom of the uh, of the <laughs> team data defence over the last six. Spoiler, also bottom of the team data attack over the last six uh, as well. He's got to go, isn't he? No, uh, I I'm <laughs> deserve I'm more... hearing is going to take the reins. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm growing more and more concerned that he's not going to be there to start the season. Yeah. I just. It, it more it's more and more looking like we're just going to have an overhaul of everything. And I don't think Ten Hag has done nearly enough this season to suggest that he is the man that's going to take them forward. I do have things that I like about Ten Hag, and I think that in some respects, when he's come in, it's been an unmanageable ship. Obviously, we've now got new owners and, well, part new owners. I, I do think they'll probably look elsewhere. I don't mm. think he'll still be there at the beginning of next season. No, be interesting to know where they, where they go. I, I I think Deservey would struggle, would struggle there with, I don't know, with the makeup of the team and and everything that goes on with the back background. Like he's he's coming from a very different ship at Brighton, where everything's very steady and yeah, yeah. you know he's kind of idolised at, at Brighton already. He hasn't even been there long. Is he going to get that same level of respect from some of the players? I mean, it's it, you know it's a lot of these players have been around for three or four different managers and it hasn't worked no. out so. Yeah, be a, be a big move here. Like Potter going to Chelsea. You just never know how it's going mm. yeah, to work. Um, look at some of the other teams. I mean, uh, quite a few of these teams kind of where we expect them to be. Arsenal and Liverpool first and third. That's where they've been over the season. Pretty consistent. A bit of a bump up for Bournemouth uh, and the Bournemouth defenders. Two, well, I mean, a, a Villa away is obviously really tough and, and Wolves away, isn't it? Is, is their other game. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's they're not, not awful, but tricky. They're not the worst team away from home defensively either. So uh, the the fact they've got two away games is nice. The, the thing I am not a massive fan of with them is that a lot of people not on free hit are going to have Bournemouth defenders. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite happy to go against it and hope they concede in both games. They don't... I mean, Kirkes is the one again because he <laughs> could potentially be playing a bit higher up. No, so no, Kirkes is a, is a little bit of a shout, potentially. <laughs> but, you know, I... I I haven't had Bournemouth defenders anywhere near my team. Yeah. Anywhere near my team. But if you've got them already, I think that's fine. I like Neto. You know, you... I like Neto. I don't think the yeah. goalkeeper position is, is obvious this week. Yeah. You, you could go for anyone. You mentioned Pickford. You could mm. go for Allison maybe if you if you wanted to, but you'd probably just yeah. go for Van Dijk. Um, that's where Neto comes in. Um, but yeah, pretty tricky. Uh, Sheffield United, though. Look at them over the last six. Up to 11th. Yeah, oh, we, talking about shoring Diaz. themselves up. Yeah, yeah, I know they're shoring themselves up a little bit. A bit late. But <laughs> I, it does it, I, it, it. It's made me laugh a little bit looking at the timeline where people are saying like, "I've waited all this time to use a free hit. And now I get to pick a Sheffield United midfielder." <laughs> uh, but they are—they have got the two best. Hey, don't you got, slay got Diaz? Burnley and Man United. We're his biggest fans on this podcast. Remember, we talked. We spent oh, about ten minutes talking about him. Oh, yeah, weeks ago. That, yeah. yeah, we got slated for that. We did. So, yeah. Uh, Call him yeah, back to us now. But, <laughs> but if you look at the, the fixtures they've got, Burnley and Man United, if you look at the team data defence over the season again, you look where Burnley and Man United are, mm. you know, Man United at the bottom of this list, could be could be the way to go. I I'm not even sure on his minutes, though, really. <laughs> I think I think if you're picking a Sheffield United defender, then <laughs> oh defender, yeah, no, yeah, you like are Brereton Diaz, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll come to the attack now. Um, over the over the season, Sheffield United are, are bottom. There they are. Uh, very, very, very low. Palace seventeenth as well. Not been, not been great for them. Obviously, they've got the new manager, and that was by far the best performance that we've seen mm. under the new manager. I thought they were absolutely fantastic in that game. And if you look at, the, I mean, I watched the, I was watching the, the game live, but I didn't realise how good the goal was until yeah. I rewatched it. And the amount of passing and, and things they do, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Obviously, with with Eze and, and Lise back, they're a they're a real threat. So yeah. take this with a pinch of salt. Wolves in sixteenth. Uh, Bournemouth in tenth, Everton in in ninth, uh, Liverpool the best attack over the season. But is it a dodgy time because now Jota's back as well, and Gakpo's playing well, and we don't know who's always going to start in in those. Um, you got Diaz on the free hit. I do. the The one other thing I was going to say about Liverpool as well is they've got four away fixtures mm. in quite quick succession. There's gonna be rotation. Like mm. if you're picking a Liverpool player, apart from Salah. They're gonna be they're gonna be rotated at some point, so it's just hoping to get enough minutes out of whoever you pick. I think. Do you think you'll get enough out of Diaz? I think so. I think Diaz, Darwin, and Jota will probably get around the same. Mm. Jota's the one. Like Jota's the one that's starting to creep into people's thoughts, and I think out of all of them, he's the clinical one. He is the one that can explode if you want him to. Like, and I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, if you only want him for one week. Maybe Jota is the way to go. Oh, here I, we go. I, don't know. Here I we know, go. I know. But then this is this is the problem, see, because now I'll be like, oh, I'll get Trent, I'll get Jota, <laughs> I'll get Havertz, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're all benched. And all the boring yeah. picks will come in and you'll be I like, oh, Exactly. Damn it. All the City boys will show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That's normally how it works. Uh, yeah. Over the last six, we see Sheffield United climb to 15th. Not a massive rise, but it's uh, not bad. Actually, non point benignity of naught point of one point zero three. Sorry, that's compared to zero point eight five. So it's a, a pretty decent rise um, for mm. them. Man United over the last six, um, as we mentioned, at a bottom zero point seven seven. So that's worse than Sheffield United over the season, um, despite having the best fixtures over that period yeah. as well, according to our our matrix. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Brighton though, good company of us. We're second from bottom, zero point seven nine. Yeah, it's jump off your Brighton it? players. We are, we're done. We are done this season. I th- I, I mean, United's an interesting one because people are going to be investing before. Um, mm. Obviously, we got Sheffield United this week and then we got the double as well. I bought Garnacho this week. <sighs> Certain players have been okay for us. So, for instance, Bruno sit a little bit of a purple patch at the moment. Garnacho's good, but obviously he's apparently now fallen out. I don't know. It's... I wouldn't be... It's tough because we've got the double. So people are going to go for, say, a Garnacho, but I don't think that's the worst idea. We've just got to hope that there's a little bit of an uptick, but I don't. I just don't see it at the moment. Mm. You're just playing it for the fixtures, really. Well done for those who've kept Philanders, though, because Philanders has been doing well despite the, yeah. the the quite poor underlyings. And he's someone that I'm looking at for the for the double uh, coming up because um, I think people will be rightly put off by some of these stats that we're showing uh, tonight. Um, another thing I wanted to point out here was Arsenal. 
Uh, they've dropped to eighth. Obviously, such such a good mm. season for them. Such good attacking data. Uh, lots of people making moves to switch out from double defence to double attack. People going for Havertz, Odegaard, Saka. I'm seeing lots of triple Arsenal. Um, you know this this week. Um, it's dropped to one point five four. Actually, on penalty for ninety, and um, that's down from one point seven seven. So again, pretty pretty sizable uh, drop, but it's not like terribly alarming. I I don't think mm. it's it's still decent underlying numbers. Um, but I guess that's a big decision for you on, on the on the free hit, right? Double defence or, or double attack. Yeah, it's such a shame they lost last week because going into this week, if if Arsenal and Liverpool were had won and that title charge was still going like it was the week before, it would have been so much more fun going for their attackers, I think. But mm. with them being knocked out of Europe as well, you just feel like maybe this is just a little bit of a slump, like not a massive one, just a little bit of a slump. And you think, oh, this is probably the worst time for us to have a double game week for Arsenal. But Wolves away, Chelsea at home, You'd expect them to be favourites in both of those games, so you'd want a few. I just less I'm rotation. At Liverpool, would you say? Oh, I Surely don't there's know. no worries. About, I mean, people were worried about Havertz. Surely there's no worry about, worries about Havertz. He'll start both the next two. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've been I've been considering taking Havertz out and putting Odegaard in. Yeah, I'm not sure, but they, this is the problem with free hitsy because you can tinker for as long as you want. You're, I, I've made my team, and you're, the first team you make is probably the right team. And always, I'm now obviously tinkering always. to infinity. go back to that. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, I, I'm tempted. I'm, I'm not overly convinced Havertz is going to play both games. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on that because I don't know. Obviously, he played midweek, didn't do a lot. Jesus obviously isn't, hasn't been doing a lot anyway. But Havertz was the one I picked straight away and thought, well, he's playing up top. He's got double game week. You know, it seems like a no brainer. But Odegaard's definitely going to play both games. So. I'm just surprised yeah. that you that people suddenly think Havertz is is going to be dropped. I, I don't really know don't why. Don't suddenly think. I just he's, he's always been a bit of a doubt in my head. Like, how mm. long is this experiment going to last for? Like, if he if he doesn't score in two games, are they going to you know stop the experiment kind of thing? <laughs> I think he's I think he's done more than enough to to stay his first choice yeah. up top from what he offers. But yeah, okay, I'd, I'd go Havertz over Odegaard um, as well. But it's good to be disagreeing. Yeah. On things. Oh no, we're not just. Disc- you look, wait till you see my free hit in a minute. <laughs> Havertz in. It's uh, yes, exactly. No, well, Trent. Trent. Yeah, it's Trent as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, love it. Uh, keepers. Just quickly go through these. If you are looking for a the best points per ninety keeper over the season, it is Allison out of the double game week options on on show. Uh, four point one. Ray's just behind him at four. Uh, Pickford's down eleven at three point five, uh, and Saar three point two. Okay, it doesn't really matter. You're going to be trying to play the fixtures anyway. Yeah. If you were picking a keeper, but well, you are picking a keeper, you've gone for have you gone for Saar? Am I remembering that right? I have, yeah. yeah. I mean, remember as well, it's the way the makeup is, isn't it? So it's not like I'm just picking a keeper. If I could have a fourth player from a from a team, then I would play like say a Raya or whatever mm. it is. But I mean, Henderson's not even on this table, which is interesting. Yeah, he comes up in the in the last six. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if you. I didn't go with Henderson. Henderson was my pick, but I didn't go for him because I fancy one of their wing backs because I don't actually expect a clean sheet from Crystal Palace in either of their two games. And I wanted more of an attacking upside. So that's why I went for one of their wing backs. But Jose Saar, home against Bournemouth, I think that's all right. But then he's got Arsenal. So it's like a almost like a single game week. But maybe he could pick up two points against Arsenal. Pickford, I think people have gone cold on him because he just conceded five goals against Chelsea. Uh, and Raya, I don't like because I don't want to use a, Six, a position it? up on, on Raya. Six, sorry, yeah. So I think keeper's really tough this week. I think Henderson would be my pick, but it's whether you want to go for Henderson or one of the wing backs. And yeah. I think a lot of people will be going Henderson. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've gone Jose Saar just because, you know, he does have a few bonus points in him as well for saves and things. So, mm. And if you look on this table, you know, 22 saves, he's got more than most of the players on here. So, yeah, I think that's probably the way I'm going to go. I'm sure there'll be one of these keepers that does well, but I don't know who it is. I, I, no. I think I'd go for Pickford, you know, just because of the two home games. Mm. And I think they've got a, a, a chance of a clean sheet against Forest, and then he should make some saves against Liverpool. But... <laughs> <laughs> and what, you know, we always say they just conceded six. There's going to be a big reaction. Deitch is going to yeah. come out and get them sorted. And it could be, you know, like you just said, you don't know who's going to do well because keeper is such a gamble position, especially this year as well. And it could just take a penalty save or a you know loads of saves for one keeper to kind of come out of the uh, the better than everybody else. But yeah, Sa- Saar is probably the way I'm going to go just because of the makeup of my team. Yep, nice uh, defense. Let's take a defence over the season. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about Trent already. Um, he shows up really well, though. He's third for defenders 
Although his XGI non penalty per 90 isn't massive. You know, we've, we've seen that with mm. him at 0.5, 0.6 in the past. It's at 0.35. Um, but his points per 90 is good in the top 10. 5.6 over the season. Great chances created. Um, although a little bit lower than Robertson, interestingly, who's uh, who's 3.10. Uh, Trent's 2.92. Eight Nori uh, showing up well, 13th on this list. His last six data is really good, um, as we'll touch on in a bit. And then it's kind of, well, ugh, where are we, where do we go now? I mean, Sinchenko yeah. is 23rd, but I mean, those those numbers aren't great, 0.18. Gabriel's down there, 0.16. I think most of us are going to have him in the side. And I've tried to pick out some others. You know, Ben White, 43rd over the season, 0.14. That's not exactly the most exciting. Van Dyke. 62nd, Mikalenko 84th. Where's Your Munoz? Mate, Mitchell 101. Uh, Mitchell, um, Munoz isn't on the, he hasn't played enough games. He's on the last six, ah, okay. which I'll show in a yeah. sec. Um, but obviously Mitchell's had the, they've had um, roles change, haven't they? Mitchell's now kind of wing back, so you'd expect his his attacking potential to to go up. Uh, Saliba and Zabali, they're the other ones, but they're both you know down in the down in the hundreds. I mean, who do, who do you yeah. like? Any, any you like out of this list? I mean, we've spoken about Trent already. And obviously, if, if you are on free hit, I think you have to consider him. Eight Nori was one, but, you know, he might not play both games in the double game week, which is an absolute killer for anybody that invested yeah. him in early. Gabriel, I think, is a lock. I, the, the, the question I was going to ask you, actually, is if you are on a free hit, double Arsenal defence. Like, I get it. The best defence in the league, got two OK fixtures, probably going to keep a clean sheet in at least one of them. But is is that the way to go? Like, is that the best way of using it? Because the other defenders this season have just been terrible, really, haven't they? Like, is that the best way to go? Or surely, you know, going for it with Arsenal to hope that they maybe score a few goals is the way to go. Like, double Arsenal defence, I'm afraid. It just seems, I don't know, just seems a bit boring to me. But maybe that's absolutely crazy considering how good they've been this season. I agree. I think it's it's... Bearing in mind, you look at this defensive list and you wonder where the points are going to come from. Well, yeah. having two Arsenal defenders kind of feels quite safe in that regard. But I could see an Odegaard or a Havertz or even like a Martinelli, like just just someone, mm. you know, a bit different because everyone's going to have Saka. And if Arsenal yeah. do score two or three goals in both of those games, it's probably not all going to come from him because those points get shared around so much. So I think taking a I'd go Havertz. I'd go Havertz, yeah. Saka and, and one defender. I think if I was yeah. doing it, I'm, but I'm I'm quite happy with the double Arsenal defense. It's a weird one. I can make yeah. a case both sides. I'm not desperate to switch and make changes, but if I had the option, free hit, you've got to go for it, haven't you? I, I just yeah, think, I, I just think, think, think you've got you've got to go for the most potential. And Arsenal, one of the best teams in the league with double game week, so get two of their two of their attackers. Yeah, no, I agree. Three so that's attackers. The way I've gone. No, I don't think I'd be going for it. <laughs> I, going against Gabriel, I think. He is somebody, like I said, I've gone against most of the year because I had Saliba instead and it killed me. Mm. And I think Gabriel, because of what he can do with set pieces, I think you still keep him. Yep. Over the last six, I was looking for any anyone who's really jumping out. Robertson does do well here. Mm. You know, looking at Robertson's stats, it, they are they are pretty decent, pretty encouraging. Actually, I'm not putting up a 90 over the last uh, six of 0.37. It's pretty good. Eight Norries is really high, 0.47. He's obviously been playing on the wing. And now... Uh, Kuhn is back up top and Huang's back on the left now that's going to push Aiden already back we would have thought which is why those stats are still good but still a good pick even at, even at wing back he was doing well yeah. um, before that Tarkovsky shows up pretty well here he does <laughs> 0.22 <laughs> higher than Gabriel um, for example interesting that Mitchell is above Munoz yeah so Mitchell in 25th Munoz in 30th the thing I will say about that is and I was talking to uh, point, Luke point who, not one in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I was talking to Luke, who's a Crystal Palace fan, and he said that thing is, Mitchell obviously got the assist, but Mitchell plays way more kind of on the flanks and he will stay stuck to that kind of flank. Whereas Munoz, like he's basically a right winger yeah. and he's getting into the box like, and, he, and he's just constantly there, constantly up there. And I think he is the pick out of the two of them. I love Mitchell because obviously he's done me so well before. But I think Munoz is the pick out of the two of them. Like I, I think if you look at the heat maps, if you look at all that kind of stuff and just look at what Munoz could do in two fixtures, two home fixtures, I think it's the way to go. Like I said, I don't expect a clean sheet in either game, but I think if you're looking for an attack and return, I think out of the two of them, Munoz is more likely to get it. I was on this podcast uh, about a month ago. Um, mm. Had a really, really you know, wise person on it talking about Munoz. 
I can't remember who it was. Uh, probably for the best. I wonder where you were going with that for a second. Then. <laughs> Straight in my wild card team, he was after that after that episode. Yeah. And this is it. I'm relying on him. He's and I've been really impressed with him. I think he he looks. He's caused problems for for the yeah. for the for defenders that he, he's up against. Uh, he yeah. did against City. He did it against Liverpool as well. He, <laughs> I don't. I classing him as a defender seems crazy because <laughs> he's so advanced. He really is yeah. when you watch yeah, him. I love him. He'll get he'll, he'll yeah. get he'll get one attacking return. I think this. Who'd, who'd have thought him. that my my two man crushes this year would be two Crystal Palace two wingbacks? Crystal wingbacks. <laughs> who'd have thought they'd even be playing wingbacks? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's I couldn't true. even imagine Mitchell was, as a wingback, but he's he's doing quite well. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you asked, Connor Richardson. Why is Ben White's number fifty two pink? There is actually a reason for that uh, because his stats are down over the season. I know how Ooh. popular Ben White is on on people's free hits and things this week. Uh, over the season, uh, his stats were zero point one four, which I thought was quite low. For him, yeah. given that we're paying more for this attacking option, but yeah, over the last six, down to 0.09, really, really low. Um, points per 90 is good, obviously, got taken off before they scored the, the goal. Yeah, people will be happy with that, but yeah, uh, the, st- uh, the attacking stats don't don't look great for, for White. Yeah, um, it's interesting. Good, good pick, I still think, but mm. maybe not as good as some people are making out. Uh, midfielders over the season, we have Salah in top, 0.82. XGI 90 De Bruyne just below him 0.77. Didn't do anything when I needed him, but you know, looking quite good now. Although I think he's got a, <laughs> got an injury. Uh, Saka in fourth. Elise though, we have got to talk about Elise. His stats mm-hmm. whenever he plays have been absolutely fantastic. Six goals, three assists for him uh, in the nine only nine starts he's had all season. Obviously he came back into the Crystal Palace team. Palace looked great. He looks great. I, I know. I'm. St- I d- uh, I still prefer Eze, if, but he looks good. He does look good. If it if it's a straight up decision between Elise and Eze, I think you go Eze every time because because of the minutes. Because Eze, I will say, uh, there's a bit of a misconception about Eze. I think he is on pens, but when Elise is on the pitch, I don't think we're certain that he's on pens. Mm. I seem to remember when Elise came back from his injury before they were both on the pitch, and Elise took the pen over Eze. And I don't know whether that was a your back kind of, you know, get on the score sheet kind of thing, or whether it was a you are taking the penalties ahead of me. I wish I could trust Elise's minutes. I really, really do. Like, I think he's going to start one of them, but I, I just don't see him starting both. The thing is, if I could guarantee he was going to start both, I think I'd go there. Mm. Like, I really do. He's such a good player. And his, his, his stats for the amount of games he plays, like you think he's 10th on this table and he's got nine starts this season. It's just he's so such a good player when he plays. The thing I will say is though, even if we're only getting say what 110, 120 minutes out of him in the double, I, I think that makes Mateta better. Okay. Mateta better. Mateta better. Because I think that helps him because they overload on the Elise and Eze side because they both go to the same side, and I think it just frees Mateta up and it just makes sure that they're creating for him. And I think it makes Mateta a better pick. I think with Elise off the pitch and it's just Eze. I think that's when it hurts them a little bit. But I think with both of them being there, I do love Eze and I see why people are going for it. I just I just don't trust the minutes. Yeah. Again, it's it's another one. It's kind of like you're playing very, very dull this free hit. If you're going to go Mateta oh, over it. Elise. Stop it. Van Dijk over what, what, Trent. They're, they're like 1% over. <laughs> Boring. God, I was being called boring, and then Harlan got injured. And of course, I already had those picks. Yeah, and I was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the Elise pick. I think he's he's a fun one uh, to bring in. Eze is 17th on the list. Uh, 19 starts for him, seven goals, three assists. So he's averaging a return every every couple of games. Probably fairly safe to get something this week. I think. Um, Eze. Yeah. I think he's. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, there was there was some question marks around his role in the system because um, he hadn't really mm. looked that great under Glasner. Looked really good in 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 the game against Liverpool. I just, you know, he's so central to everything that kind of happens. And having seen him live, I, I, I yeah, I just love him. I think he's he's an absolutely amazing player. It's gonna be so interesting yeah. to know what happens with Elise and and Eze yeah, in the summer. I think Elise's off. Yeah, Man U. Yeah, I think so potentially <laughs> ruin him yeah. like did it's, it stinks it's, oh, and Zaha <laughs> it's like stinks of that doesn't it like when we got Zaha and then Fergie left yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Brereton Diaz he's 13th he is he is the bandwagon I think of of, of Twitter uh, at the moment he's gonna score he's gonna <laughs> score isn't he he's gonna be such a bad pick and he's gonna score and people are gonna go wild it's pretty I mean eight starts four goals one assist 
decent underlying yeah. stats, playing for a Chevy United team who have improved a, a lot over the last six game weeks as well. And they've got two good fixtures, Burnley at home and Manchester United. They do. They do. Um, FPL Freddy, by the way, says Andy doesn't think anyone will start both games in the double. <laughs> yeah. That's because as that's because as is asking me about all the gamble players. I did just say <laughs> I think Eze is going to start gonna both start games. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> well, it'd just be our luck if Eze doesn't. As things as I'm bringing him yeah, in and bloody captain him. It'd be typical, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, interesting. Uh, uh, the other one I wanted to talk about on here as well, and we kind of touched on it briefly. Diaz is 11th, mm. and Jota is 19th. McAllister's nowhere on this because I was quite high on McAllister, but I did a lot of these stats as well for mm. Scoutcast, and I was like, "Oh God, he's like nowhere." <laughs> but between Diaz and Jota, if you had to choose between the two, Diaz has genuinely been really good. He's in that first choice three. Darwin's kind of slipping out now, but if if we get an indication that Jota could get the same kind of minutes and Diaz as Diaz over mm. this double, would you be tempted to go for a Jota over Diaz? I like Diaz because I feel like he's in the form of his his life, you know. And he looking at kind of everyone in the in the Liverpool front line, like Salah's way off it at the moment. Just mm. doesn't look himself. Darwin, don't even get me started about him. Gakpo looks pretty good, but I'm not sure he's got the full backing of of Klopp. Uh, Jota's obviously come back from the injury, so I think Diaz is is hard to ignore because of how well he's performed consistently for for a while. Since his dad got kidnapped, really, he's been absolutely mm. un- unbelievable. Um, you know, it can always something like that can always give you a bit of an extra, an extra spark. Jota is fun. Nine goals, six assists, thirteen starts. We know he's clinical. He did miss a good chance in in the last game. With Darwin not really performing though, you've got to think Jota is gonna gonna get get some time. It is tricky, isn't it? It is. It, like, and genuinely, it is. I think Diaz is a safe pick. I think Diaz gets you, what, 140-odd minutes in the double game week. But I think if Jota's getting anywhere close to that, I, I think you've got to consider him. You just said 13 starts, nine goals, six mm. assists. He's just, the, he's out of all of them, he's the clinical one. He's the one that's going to get you the goals. It's just whether you can get Klopp the minutes loves in that double game week. Klopp loves him. Yeah, yeah. No, no, well, rightly he, so. Yeah. He, he returns when he plays. And and he does everything that Klopp wants, yeah, the, the pressing that he that he gives. Um, as well, it's just it's just that injury that he's been out for. I think I I think I'd stick with Diaz because um, I don't think there's a huge huge much in it between them. I think either of them could get a double digit in, in any game. But yeah, I, I think Jota is, is going to fly massive under. You're only really going to be able to get Jota, aren't you? If you're on a if you're on a free hit, yeah. Whereas, oh yeah. Whereas time. Diaz, yeah. people are going to are going to have anyway. So it'd be a bit less of a differential. But both 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 look good. I'd, I'd lean for Diaz. I think though. Mm, um, other players to mention here I mentioned Martinelli obviously risk with him with, with Jesus sometimes playing on the left uh, he hasn't had an amazing uh, season although 11 returns no. 23 starts it's not not awful no. but hasn't really kicked on to what we thought he might um, Sarabia I've got him 4.8 million relatively happy with him I know lots of people are going for Kuna uh, he missed a great chance at the bloody weekend he is he is like that he's a frustrating pick yeah uh, chances of credit is good though, 2.8. That is uh, second highest, I think, to um, De Bruyne, uh, yeah. 5.02. So that's you know that's that's encouraging. Has been playing as a bit of a false nine, had pens, hasn't got those anymore. Um, but I like him at 4.8. And then you mentioned Odegaard. Um, he's down in 39th. Good chances created. Actually, a little bit higher than, than Serbia, uh, 2.82. Um, and Havertz is in, in 26th. I mean, where, where are you thinking of leaning with, with the Havertz and, and Odegaard? I'd, I'd pick Havertz all day. Yeah, I've got, I've got Havertz at the moment. It's just, if if I worry that he's not going to get the minutes, then I'll go Odegaard. Like, actually, if you look at their stats, you know, they've they basically got the same stats. It's just that Odegaard's played more games. Mm. So I think the other thing is, obviously, if Saka needs a rest at any point, Odegaard's on penalties. So that's a nice thing as well. But I think Havertz is the pick in terms of the fact that, you know, he's playing up top. And you look at those two games, I expect them to score against Wolves and Chelsea. So uh, it's whether I expect Havertz to score them or Odegaard. Odegaard, obviously takes it for a bit more from from outside the box where Havertz is, is done mm. quite well actually playing a striker. So I think Havertz is the pick out of the two of them. Yep. Uh, Kieran C, did I just say that your dad being kidnapped can make you play better? No, that's not what I said. I'm not I'm not saying... That's disgusting, <laughs> as. <laughs> I'm just saying that when something like that happens, a traumatic oh. thing in your life, and then, you know, you it can give you a bit of an extra... Imagine being cancelled live on stream. <laughs> oh, OG Don Juan said it now. Your dad getting kidnapped to give you an extra spa. Oh, God. Yeah, I definitely am getting cancelled now. That's not, that's not what I meant. 
I just, it's disgusting. I, I just, Do you want me to finish the his stream? His dad's a big football man and he comes to the games and he kind of, you know, just gives you that bit of extra impetus to impress. I'm going to stop digging uh, before yeah. I go. Uh, over the last six, um, Eze climbs up here. Look at those stats for Eze, 0.8 over the last yeah, six. Yeah, not looking bad. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I said, um, you know, maybe he hasn't looked great in, in the games. I think he's looked a little bit, I don't know, I won't say uncertain of his role, but I, I kind of don't, couldn't really see where he was sort of playing or what his best position was in this new system. But the underlying yeah. stats are, are still remain sort of pretty good. Um, so I, I like that. Salah's second with 0.9. Obviously, that's the that's the most popular captain pick I think we're going to see this week. Um, is, Salah, yeah. is that who you're currently on? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Nothing else to add on that? Just, yeah. No, I thought we were going to get the captains okay, later, aren't we? So I didn't want to go into it too to much now. <laughs> uh, Diaz in ninth, 0.8. Again, these are all really encouraging signs for people, um, players people are bringing in. Uh, Havertz yeah. in 15. Our best mate Diaz uh, down in, in 18th. Uh, Saka, ben, look at that. Ben, Ber ben Brereton Diaz. Ben is, Brereton Diaz, sorry. Yeah, not, not, the, yeah. not Lewis Diaz. Lewis Diaz. Yeah. Saka in 27th. Touches in the mm. box. Uh, per 19 is within the top 10. But he has been mm. disappointing. Since he started getting okay. double digit hauls every every week, he hasn't had one in ages. Exa this is exactly what people were saying about Saka before he went on that run of like he had four weeks where he was getting fourteens and fifteens every week. So no, it, it <laughs> oh, God, That's dark, I'm not read of that. But quite funny. Yeah. Uh, so I, no, I, Saka will be fine. He's limping off at the end of every game at the moment, but he's he's going to play every game and he's on penalties and he can easily get you goals in any game. So yeah, he's a lock. Yeah, him limping at the end of every game is quite, is quite funny though. I know. Every game they lose. <laughs> every game they lose. Uh, yeah. yeah, there wasn't anything massively I noticed uh, from this. I think, like I said, some of the popular picks that people are going for have, have climbed up these these ranks and that bodes, that bodes well for them. Obviously, like Elise is mm. not here because he hasn't played enough. Um, but yeah, I think if you're free hitting, you know, you, you're going to have a Havertz, you're going to have an Eze, you're going to have a Diaz, you're going to have a... A Diaz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, then, and then go from there. Uh, forwards. Obviously tough. Nunes second over the season, 0.89. Oh, Solanke 16th, 0.55. Big Dom. Big Dom Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, no, he's there. He's there. I'm looking for, I'm look, I'm looking for Mateta. <laughs> Mateta is... Him. Where is Mateta? He must he's not be, on there. He must be in the top 30. Edward's on there. Oh, my God. Let me yeah. check that. Nunes in second, though. Like we said tonight, I, I am getting the impression that he's kind of dropped out of the favoured front three, potentially. Uh, if you have Darwin... Oh, God, Mateta's 41st. I'm sorry. I'm just... There he is. There he is. <laughs> I think boy. if you have Darwin... I mean, if you have Darwin now... I do. Would you be getting rid of him? I do have Darwin. And would you be getting rid of him? I want to. Mm. And that's why I want to get Trent because that also gets me rid of Darwin as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. It's... Because I don't have Solanke, for example. Yeah. So I, I, could, I could... I kind of wish, because I had I had two transfers last week and I didn't really know what to do with my team. So in the end, I made the most boring move ever, which was Richards, Crystal Palace Richards, to Charlie Taylor. Yeah, I know, I, it's disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> But I looked at it after the deadline. I thought I could have done Darwin to Solanke. Yeah, quite like you know, I quite like that. But obviously, too late, and then Solanke scored. And taking out a player at home to Palace when I thought Liverpool would win that game was was a bit of a risk. So I can see why I didn't do it. But I could do that now. I could do Darwin to to Solanke. Mm. Um, I could do Darwin to Kuna, um, and then and then get Trent. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Yeah. This week, don't hate it. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't think Darwin would be this much of an issue going into the double game week. And when I was looking at free hit drafts before this week, Darwin was in all of them. Mm. So it's really interesting how quickly he can drop yeah, it out. Is. Yeah, uh, seventeen goal involvements for Kuna over the season. Um, you know, we talk about budget, good budget options. That's that's remarkable. In twenty five starts, yeah. 17, 17 goal involvements for five point six yeah. million. It was an interesting performance, wasn't it? Because he scored that wonder goal where the defendant was just absolutely yeah, yeah. shocking. Yeah, that's true. But it was a hell of a finish as well. It was a great mm. goal. And then obviously it was a bit of a tap in, wasn't it? Goal mouth scramble. So, yeah, I think maybe his it, it's been inflated a little bit, the hype. 
but I think he, you know, he's he's been a good option. Like Wolves' options have been great this season. Mm. Like under Gary O'Neill, they've been really good. Sarabia and Huang, who could be back as well, which is big, and and Cunha as well. I think they've had some really good ones. What an amazing manager Gary O'Neill is, and like the jobs he's done at both both clubs mm. at Bournemouth and now at Wolves when they've been I was, so. I wasn't a massive fan of him at Bournemouth, but yeah. Well, he got the job done, didn't he? They were they were pretty much cast adrift under under Parker when they came up. Yeah, and, and Harland. Well, I won't go into it now. I'm pretty sure I've gone into it before. Have you? Here, okay. but I'm not, just, yeah, just hate Gary O'Neill. No. Poor Gary. Don't hate him. I just I, I didn't like him that much at Bournemouth. Oh, I, I think no. I think he's I think he's brilliant. I think he's done a great job at Wolves. I think you've been very oh, mean. Good for you. Good for you, as. <laughs> Why do you marry him? <laughs> uh, over the last six weeks, we see Nunes uh, drop the underlines. That's still good, but he's obviously mm. not second uh, over the season. Timo Werner and Alvarez show up. Uh, well here so does Isak I mean, we haven't talked about Isak he's been yeah. unbelievable um, since, since I bought him in he's, he's been great I went I thought I'd gone a week too late on him because he got the two goals against West Ham but he, he's been brilliant 17 goals for the season he's well in the golden boot race uh, six goals and assists over the last six game weeks uh, in only five starts Wilson back in training any worries about him now I don't think so. I think Isaac's there, you know, he's their poster boy now, isn't he? And obviously I think every t- every game he's fit, he's going to play. I don't think it is like last season where it's a uh, swap one in, swap one out. Mm. The only thing they could do is obviously is, is minutes could be a little bit reduced because they're going to start being able to take him off, you know, if they're two, yeah. three, four nil up against Spurs again. But I, I, I think Isaac's a great shot. I think his ownership from game week 35 onwards is going to be ridiculous. I think it's going to shoot up like mad because people are going to start dropping those other strikers and going to yeah. be bringing Isak in. He's such a, a lovely cost as well, at only 8 million. So yeah, I think, I think he's a really, really good shout. Obviously I'm moving, I'm, I'm going Tony to Isak and I think Isak, he's going to be a kind of season keeper now until the end of the season. The fixtures are just too good. Mm. Slanky's in 25th over the last six, uh, 0.33. Yeah. I was listening to um, Planet FPL uh, earlier mm. and James was saying that he was watching the game and every time the camera panned Slanky he was wincing like he was in he was in pain I don't think his starts are, are in question but he clearly is still carrying right. something um, still yeah, doing well I mean yeah, 17 I goals so. for the season or 18 whatever it is absolutely incredible yeah. do I need him Andy that's my question to you for this week I think I haven't got I haven't done a free hit without him in it no uh, I think he he is somebody. If you, the problem with you, the problem with you, the problem for them. you, yeah, <laughs> the problem for you is you're not really going to want him afterwards. That's yeah. the thing because their fixtures do drop off a bit of a cliff. I mean they've got they've got you guys at home, but they've got Arsenal away, they've got Chelsea away. I don't think you're going to want him after it. So it's if you're getting Trent in and you're getting Solanke. I I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a stretch personally, but I think for this week. With what Aston Villa away, Wolves away, I'd I'd say I'd probably get him in. Yeah, it's it's the same with Kuna because Kuna's got the double, but one of the games is Arsenal. Obviously, not ideal, yeah. but I don't think Slanky's two away games is this completely ideal. And then Kuna's got Luton at home in thirty five, which looks good. Slanky's got Brighton mm. at home; they're fine. But it's Man City and Liverpool for Kuna uh, in in thirty six, yeah. thirty eight. It's like oh, I don't really want him for e- either of those. So what do, what do I do? Uh, I I wouldn't mind a punt on Calvert Lewin, you know. But I don't trust that. Oh, God, I don't, I don't, don't do it. I don't trust don't that hamstring. Do I don't trust that hamstring of his. <laughs> he, he, he is. There's no way he's going to play two games in the double, is there? Surely not. Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, Nigel the Crab's asking. Uh, he's saying, hey, welcome yeah, back, chaps. YouTube informs me I've been spamming your live for eight months now. Have we had Az's <laughs> obscure pick of the week? What's your obscure pick? You had Cliver, Bettino. Who is it this week? Oh, I'm, I'm tempted to stick with calvert Lou. <laughs> Are you? Oh, I like it. I, d- I, I quite like Everton's fixtures as, as ridiculous. I know they just got hammered um, six 0 but I think they can. I think they can get something against Forest and that Liverpool game. Obviously, you don't expect them to win, but could could be could be anything. Let's take a back look at some of the midfielders. Do I, none really scream at me. You can't go Brereton Diaz either. I think DCL is the one, mate. Yeah, I'll stick with I'll stick with DCL. You you got one. No, no, no. I, 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 I've played this game before. I'm not going against <laughs> as Mystic as. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let you have that one again. Just with Calvert Lewin as well. If if Calvert Lewin starts both games, I reckon he could do really well. There you go. How's that for insight? I will say as well. Our little bet we made with Luke. He oh. went with Isak as his striker. I went with Nicholas Jackson, who did really well this week. Who did you go with as? 
Rodrigo Muniz, <laughs> <laughs> who went from scoring every week to never scoring Love again it. once I said that. Midas touch. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Fixtures then. We've got quite a few of these to, to cover. Um, oh, just a bit. Going forward. So let's do that. Luton, Brentford. Not a huge amount of interest in, in kind of the, the single game week games. There will be some stragglers with a, a Flecken or a Regulon, maybe a, a Morris like you have in your non-free hit team. Uh, yeah. or a, a or a Doherty I mean <sighs> tricky game to predict I, I've gone for a Brentford win Luton yeah, have got so to win I... this one though haven't they if they're going to stay up they, they really have yeah. got to win this one yeah I've got I've gone 2-1 Brentford I think they've been, they've been looking better since they've had Wisser and Mbumo uh, up top and I think Mbumo's making a bit of a difference for him Tony doesn't seem to be getting any minutes which actually isn't hurting them I think defensively they're looking slightly better so yeah I've, I've gone 2-1 win yeah uh, Sheffield United at Burnley I've gone for a Burnley win. Oh, I think it's probably a bit too late now, but might might give them a, a fighting chance. You've gone for a one-all. It's kind of a, a, a pretty rubbish set of, of, uh, of fixtures at three o'clock on, on Saturday. But also, <laughs> yeah. if Luton win and Burnley win, kind of makes the relegation battle quite quite interesting. Yeah, I've got I've got one all. I think they're both going to walk out of this game and go. What was the point? So we're going to walk out. <laughs> Bit like them in the each. league this didn't, season. <laughs> yeah, didn't help anybody. So yeah, yeah I'm going to go one all. Yep. Uh, Wolves, Arsenal. We've both gone for an Arsenal win. I've gone for a two nil. You've gone for a two one. Yeah, I think Wolves. If they do have Wang back, they've got Cunha, Huang, Sarabia. They got. Yeah, you know, I, I think they've got the attacking options there to to maybe do it and. I just think Arsenal might have a little bit of a hangover mm. from Europe as well and just be a little bit down. So if they don't and they come back and they just win this 2-3-0, then I think that shows an awful lot about their character, even though they're young. So it'd be really interesting to see how they they bounce back from what happened midweek. It's funny the narrative you can spin, isn't it? You can say they might be a bit down, not really playing, mm. a bit disheartened. Or you can say, oh, they're going to be desperate to get their title charge back on track. And Yeah, exactly. And it. Yeah, I just think they're... <laughs> yeah, I think we're both supposed to win because they... They should beat Wolves, but Wolves are a funny team. They they, they could yeah. they could. I mean, if they lose that, then I mean, it's Wolves and Fulham, isn't it? They're the two yeah. teams this this year. Absolutely. That's just one week they're awful, and the next week they can thrash anybody. Uh, if Arsenal or Liverpool drop any more points now, though, they're, they're done. Yeah, that, that's that's it. So oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, can't can't afford it. City will win every game. <laughs> yep. Uh, Everton Forest. I'm back in Calvert Lewin. Mm. That's why I've gone for a one 0 Forest win. Good. Uh, oh. You've gone for two one. You've gone for some some Everton points. I this have. is a massive, yeah. massive. It is a big game. There's some big games out there this week in that relegation I, battle. I've got a feeling with the whole Nottingham Forest uh, ticket prices and all Ooh, this stuff, it's all yeah, doom and gloom the at the Forest. Yeah, and I think Everton are going to nick it. Oh, if, well, if Everton, let's just check the table quickly. If Everton do win that game, that'll that'll be Forest on 26. So if Luton won and, and Forest lost, Luton will go above above Forest. If Forest win that, they'll be on twenty nine. Everton on twenty seven. Oh god, that is such a big game. That that Luton <laughs> or Burnley on twenty. Burnley on twenty. Yeah, they're they're not going to make it. I don't think. Yeah. Ooh, that is that is spicy. Uh, Villa Bournemouth. I've gone for two one. You have as well. Yeah, I've gone for two one. Yeah, I've gone two one. Yeah, yeah, I think um I think Villa might be a little bit tired because they went to extra time and they won on pens, didn't they? But uh, I think I think they'll get the the win over Bournemouth at home. Selling our our, uh, our Watkins and our, our other players, that's uh, gone well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, he's just carried on, hasn't he? But yeah, you, you can't own them all during this bit, can you? And you've got to target the double game weeks and that. So. It is frustrating, though, when you know we, we've got all these players not doing that great and the top scoring player of the season just carries on doing well with all the yeah. all the people that don't think about FPL as much as we do have, have, all, have all kept him in. Uh, Palace West Ham, we've both gone for mm. a Palace win. In this West Ham playing now against Leverkusen. Leverkusen just equalised to continue their unbeaten uh, season. Incredible. He took. He was there in the relegation zone when he took over. Alonso. Yeah, I know. Unbelievable. I think Palace will win this. I think that that win against Liverpool will really give them some confidence that they're they're on the right the right lines. And it's always tough to come off the Europa League game. Yeah, I think so. Two Eze goals, two Mateta assists. We'll be happy. Do you know what? I'll lock that in right now. If, that could, if, you, <laughs> if I will take that. I will definitely take that. Uh, Fulham, Liverpool. I think Liverpool get one clean sheet in the next two. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not totally sure about it. This this game yeah. is either going to be a... I think it's either going to be a Liverpool comfortable win or Fulham nick it. Or, yeah. or you know, and, and yeah, I just think it's... Oh. 
Yeah, I've gone for two nil. Uh, you've gone for three one Liverpool. So you're thinking it's a comfortable win. Yeah, I think I think there'll be some goals. I, I do. I think when you look at the double game week teams, I, I expect Liverpool to score more goals than anybody else. If I'm looking, I don't think I did Arsenal. Yeah, so I, I think. Um, yeah, I think I think Liverpool score more goals than any other team in the double game week. Yep, that's why you got to go for Salah then. Yeah, Arsenal Chelsea, big game, another big game. Yeah, both, that both gone two nil. Both gone two nil. Yeah, amazing result for for Chelsea. We talked about them earlier in the in the in the stream about the penalties and and all that. Is still, I I, I don't know where that six nil came from. I I didn't see them hammering a team <laughs> yeah. like that. They surely won't get anything against Arsenal. Arsenal were too. Well, good. this is. This is just like Chelsea to win 6-0 and then the next week yeah. just lose 2-0 and not really show anything. Yeah. So it'd be interesting with Palmer though. We've both mm. gone 2-0 and obviously everybody's very worried about benching Palmer. But I think you do. And this is the toughest fixture defensively that he is going to have all season. Yep. So I think it's fine. Yeah, I mean, Haaland is, is the other one, isn't he? The, that we're that we're potentially selling or benching or, or whatever. Mm. But I mean, the, the injury makes that a bit... But easier, but I don't yeah. think anyone was anyone was really thinking of benching Haaland, um, no, or, or selling him. But well, Palmer, Pete, so, there was a few people that had him on free hit. Yeah, yeah, I don't, and I, yeah. I don't blame them because we, we've been so poor. But Palmer, mm. I haven't seen in any in any kind of drafts. Um, I think you play him if you, you know, if you need to. I don't think you're going to be taking hits to not play him. No, no, but, I agree. Yeah, it still looks, still looks, still looks good. Cool, cool, good something. Uh, Wolves, Bournemouth. I've gone for a one. All you've gone for a two one. You're loving Wolves. Two wins. Yeah, oh, I am no, actually. Sorry, yeah, which is weird because I don't, I don't have, I don't have any, <laughs> any wolves apart from Saar, and I'm not predicting <laughs> any clean sheets for either. So, yeah, Get yeah, I know. So yeah, but no, I, I just bounce him to score against these two teams. So yeah, I, th- I think, I think they might get a win against Bournemouth, and Gary O'Neill will get one over on him. Yep. Uh, Palace Newcastle. We've both gone for goals in this. I think this, this is, this is why I like Eze because I think the, the two home games, West Ham and Newcastle, they are. They, they they should score goals in, in both of those games. Um, yeah. Newcastle are going to score goals as well in this because their their attack is is brilliant at the moment. I've gone for three two Newcastle. You've gone for a two all. Should be a fun one that. Yeah, I'm predicting goals. Newcastle away from home aren't as good. I think they're going to concede a few, and they they whenever they concede a few, they need to score a few, and they always do for some mm. reason. So I, I I don't want them to because I think people will be playing, say, an Isak and a Gordon potentially, and obviously as a free hitter, I want I want them to not do very well. But yeah, I feel like this is the game for the for the goals. I'll be playing Isak and Eze. So if this game finishes three yeah. two and I get some Isak oh. and Eze points, I will be over the You'd moon. Be loving life. Yep. Uh, Everton Liverpool. The Merseyside Derby, uh, both come for Liverpool win, both come for a 2-1 uh, in this. You never really know what you're going to get. Uh, Beto doesn't look great though, does he? I, I don't think nah. he's he's the man to save them. Um, they need Calvert-Lewin back in for this one. My yeah. boy. I, I think, yeah, it's going to be, I, I'm not sure what it's going to be like atmosphere-wise. Obviously, I know Merseyside Derby is always a bit fiery, but yeah, I, I've gone 2-1. I think both teams will score. Yep. Uh, Manchester United, Sheffield United. Your team comfortable win. You've gone for here. No, no Diaz. No Diaz love. Nah, nah. easy. <laughs> two nil. Yeah. Onana, two uh, one. Onana ten pointer. We'll win two nil. Bruno penalty. Garnacho goal. I think Diaz <laughs> scores in the first five minutes against Manchester United. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you. I th- I reckon we'll be one nil up in the 89th minute and we'll lose two one. Yeah, that could well happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brighton Man City. That's the final game. I've got no confidence in us at the moment. Uh, I am backing us to get a goal, but I think we'll, we'll go down three one to City. Uh, you've gone for a two nil. Didn't even give us a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Man yeah, City Gavardia can't do keep. Quite well. Yeah, that'd be nice, but they can't keep. Clean sheets. I say nice. It wouldn't be nice. I feel very conflicted. I say I just. I'm just. This is that part of the season where we, we're just going to finish. The best case scenario is we finish in the top ten. Yeah. I can see us dropping under the top ten. We're just. It's weird that though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, predictions league. This is for the Godfather tier members. Do consider joining our channel if you're interested in getting involved in this and some of the other leagues we've got. Um, things like meetups and and stuff. Discord channel. Uh, check out the the perks. For that tricky FPL, who is our uh, sort of long-term recorder of of, uh, of these of these over the, over the years, uh, also doing brilliantly um, in this winning this. Lee, who set this all up as well, are doing well as well. I'm happy with my 51.87% results. Are correct, that's the best I've had in in previous seasons, and it's just ahead of Mark, 51.24. Uh, so no, I, I need will, to get in this next year. Take that. Yep, we'll get you in that. Next year. Mm. Don't you worry. Captain's data. This is the the big question, really. I mean, I know Salah's popular, but there are options. Saka, obviously. 
um, given that he's on for another 200 point uh, season, 14 goals, 11 assists over, I haven't seen too many going for Saka uh, with the armband. Um, I've gone mm. for Eze. You can see the, the blue fixtures kind of make me think that's, uh, that's where the most goals might happen, but obviously he's playing for Palace and not for a, a top, top team. Yeah. Could take a punt on a Havertz, a Trent, a Kuna, Solanke. Yeah, I, th- I think if it was, I mean, obviously I'm doing the same. I, I, I've got Salah and I think Salah is, is clear, but I think Eze is a really good shout. Mm. I really do. I think Eze is fun. I think he is with those two fixtures and the goals we're expecting from those two fixtures as well. I do think Eze is a really good shout, genuinely this week. I think Darwin's nowhere near because of minutes. I think Saka... I don't know. I haven't. I haven't thought about Saka for for captaincy at all. I, I really haven't. I'm surprised I'm been... not seeing him like mentioned. Yeah, he's, he's two I, decent I, games. Chelsea and Wolves. Yeah, it's not bad at all, is it? And obviously he's on penalties. I, I just think Salah's there, and with Eze with those two home fixtures, it, it really is. He, he's up there, I think, in terms of in in your consideration. But I think just owning Eze is also enough. I think mm. Salah is is the is the clear captain for me still. If you were picking an Arsenal mid out of Saka Havertz and Odegaard, would you stick with Saka? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think I would too. My team then. So I haven't got any fancy chips. I haven't got anything. I'm... <laughs> you did? <laughs> I'm bleeding chips, as he says in uh, Casino Royale. Uh, it's, for me, this is this time. I've got another free transfer to make. I've got Raya in goal, Gabriel Munoz, Vardiol, Salah Saka Eze, Sarabia, Haaland, Darwin, Isak. Uh, Turner, Palmer, Taylor and Bradley um, on the bench. I don't really hate this team. I know it's only eight doublers, but I've got Vardy, Owen, mm. Haaland. So I'm backing City to do quite well against us. And Isak is, is in is in great form as well. Um, so I, I could just stick with those. Um, or I do Darwin to Kuna um, and then Bradley up to, to Trent. And you would bench Haaland? Yeah, well, if Haaland's out, I think that will push me more towards towards doing that because I'd bench him. Because yeah. it would be a bit of a reluctant benching of Vardiol if I was going to yeah. do it um, the other way. So, yeah, we'll have to see what what, what the state is with, with Haaland. Um, but... I think your team's looking good, though, yeah. considering yeah. considering you haven't had the chips to be able to use. I know, obviously, you wildcarded not that long ago, but your, team, your team's looking good. You've got a few players in there that I'd be scared of not owning. But luckily for me, obviously, Haaland's a doubt now. But Isak's obviously the other one. But Darwin was the big one. I was thinking, God, if I don't own him on free hit, but it's looking less and less likely that he's going to have a chance to do the damage. So that's good. Yeah, I, I, I wish I wish Darwin was Solanke. I think if Darwin was Solanke, yeah. then I'd, I'd I'd be a bit more confident. I don't really want to. As um, someone just asked this before, or after it's after one transfer, so I had two transfers. Uh, whoops. Um, so I did Santo Santo Eze. Um, it actually it, it helps me if I can keep that transfer because I can go into next week with mm. two, bring Son yeah, back nice. in. Maybe get Gordon um, as well, uh, you know, or another Chelsea player, another Tottenham player. I'm not totally sure I want to do that, but it gives me a bit more room to, to play with. So if Haaland's fit, I'll probably just stick with this. If he's yeah. out, then I'll, I'll probably take the, the minus four. Uh, but this is what everyone's here for, the free hit team yeah. of Andy yes. North. Talk, so talk it through. Yes, please. Uh, so yeah, I got Jose Sarr in goal. I got Gabriel Munoz and Virgil Van Dijk at the back. Virgil Van Dijk could be Trent, but we'll see. It's, it's Virgil at the moment. He came off and for I got seventy Havertz. minutes today. Trent, does that help at all? Yeah, yeah. I think he looked annoyed that he came off apparently as well. So I like that. You've got to uh, go so for got, Trent. You've got to go got, for Trent. You've got to. I've got Havertz, Havertz and Saka in the middle with Eze, Luis Diaz and Salah. I think that midfield is pretty locked, to be perfectly honest. Mm. And then Solanke and Mateta up top. Again, I think that's pretty locked as well with Gerbic, uh, Mikalenko, <laughs> Cunha and Branthwaite on the bench. I think majority of this is, is not going to change unless injuries happen. So... Gabriel, Munoz, Havertz, Saka, Eze, Luis Diaz, Salah, Salanki and Mateta mm. uh, are pretty much there for me. You know, they're, they're, they're there. I, th- I'm, I can't really see them changing. It's Van Dijk and Trent, and then it's Jose Sarr. They're, they're my two where I'm a bit like, Meh. Munoz, I was thinking about getting Mitchell just for the, you know, nostalgia. nostalgia yeah. <laughs> but I can't ignore Munoz and how far forward he is. So I'm, I'm picking him. I also like aesthetically how this looks. I think very, it looks very, very, very pretty. Very yeah. pretty. Very, uh, very but yeah, so Slanky's the odd one out, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Damn it. Um, <laughs> so I think with how solid the rest of it is, I could go for Trent over Van Dyke. You've got I think to go I could. for Trent. 
You've got to go. If I'm confident enough, he plays enough. I think I'd be tempted to. But Jose Sars, the other one, I'm just looking at it and thinking, just looks so boring, doesn't it? Like I, I'm just looking at it and thinking, I'm not expecting anything from that Arsenal game. And then I'm hoping for maybe something against Bournemouth. But then I've got Solanke. But it's who else do I go for? I don't really no. want to go for Pickford. So it's, uh, I mean, the other thing was, do I get Henderson and then change Munoz? But I really want Munoz. Like, I want that attacking upside for the defender. So, yeah, I mean, I could get rid of Mateta and play Cunha, but I'm not expecting anything in that Arsenal game. So, yeah, I think I'll probably just go Saar, knowing that he could get me a few with save points and things. So, yeah. I think I th- I'm pretty happy with this, to be honest. I mean, it's interesting that you've got Saar, Henderson, and Pickford all with all with two home games. I think you go for yeah. you go for one of those. I think, um, like you say, I think with with Palace having good options with the wing backs, and then Eze Elise and, and Mateta, that probably rules Henderson out because you probably want to go for one and then two. So yeah. it's Pickford or Saar probably as as the picks. I think I'd go for Pickford, but there's not much in it. Let's be honest. No, no uh, it's not. Yeah, no, I like it. Looks looks good. Looks yeah, thank a you. Good team. Um, can I slate it at all? That's what we tend to do on these things. Oh, he's struggling. Um, he's struggling. He can't. He can't. Well, do I mean, it. the only thing I can say, I just cannot believe you've got Van Dijk in over, over Trent. <laughs> That's all I'm yeah, going to keep remember, pushing. I mean, remember, you know, this is, I've had this now locked in for a couple of days. So this was, this was before we knew the extent of Bradley's injury and the fact Trent started tonight and got 70 minutes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I, It'll go down to the wire. I'm not 100% saying I'll go for Trent because I do like the minutes of, of Van Dijk, obviously. But I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning that way. Uh, loads of people are asking me about um, <laughs> Mitchell and me not getting Mitchell and going Munoz over Mitchell. My yeah, boy, sorry. Munoz. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I love I both first. of them. I love both of them. And I, I'm going to be going Munoz over Mitchell. Oh, do you know what would be because, fun? What? You could get both. both. Yeah. No, I can't get both. <laughs> both I wing need backs. Eze and I want Mateta, so I can't, I could, that would be good, though. Mateta? Imagine... Do you really want Mateta that much? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I told you, with, with Eze and Elise, I think Mateta's a good option. Mm. You know, he did well against Liverpool. West Ham at home, Newcastle at home. I expect there to be goals. It'd be oh, all right. Get Mitchell instead of Mateta. Go for the wing backs. Nope. Play a 4 Never 5 happened. 1, like a relegated. Never... Oh, God. <laughs> Never happening. <laughs> yeah, it, I think. That's uh, Adam Clark says it best. Only way you can slay it is by saying it's a bit boring. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> See, I'd take that as an insult. I'd be like, right, I need to rip everything up. <laughs> Get some yeah. interesting players in. <laughs> uh, Black Box Leagues. It's been a couple of weeks since we, we did these and a, a bit of change. Uh, Sundeep still remains top. Massive score, 91 points. Uh, first in the world, I think, still. Must be after 91. Nice. Uh, John O'Shea. The John O'Shea uh, in second. Uh, Mike Dobson's climbing. Christopher Lay's climbing. Uh, Christian uh, Larich has dropped to fifth. Uh, someone new in sixth has climbed up as well. Big score 80. Uh, Richard Smith, uh, Killian Kenny and Chris McMenamin. Seventh, eighth and ninth. And Joel Wallen in tenth. All having amazing seasons. And are much better than mine. Uh, in the Apprentice League though, and this is really what everyone cares about. Mark's in first. No one cares about that. As Phillips up to second. Overtaken, really? overtaken both Liesl and Ryan. Ryan, who's never finished higher than top 500k, and Liesl, who's playing her first ever season FPL. But, ah, oh, Proud it. of you. Yeah. Proud of you, finally. Cream always rises. Yeah. Have they got any chips left? <laughs> yep, I believe they've got a oh, lot of no. chips left. <laughs> so I am definitely screwed. Uh, it's fine. It's nice to be ahead, even if it's for uh, just a few weeks. Uh, in the Godfather League, Richard Smith is top of this. Um, but Pratic had a good week this week, caught up uh, 14 points. Uh, Connor Gray in third, Avi Fratcher in fourth, Mr. Mark Subbins in fifth, uh, Chris in sixth, Tom Gould in seventh, Stuart Thompson in eighth, uh, Nick Baker and Chris Tanya both falling to ninth and tenth, respectively. Lovely stuff. Andy, hour and a half. We've absolutely blitzed through this. Easy. Blitzed through this Easy. today. Thanks for joining Easy. me again. Yeah, no worries, very nice. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you, everyone, uh, for watching. Sorry that the episodes have been a bit sporadic and sort of marks kind of in and out and stuff. We're trying to, uh, you know, kind of do as many of these uh, as we can. I know my team selection videos have stopped. Ma- I mean, Mark is, is off because of work stresses and, and some kind of health issues. My work is absolutely crazy. And if you want to start doing some solo videos for the channel... <laughs> you're more than welcome <laughs> I don't think people want that I don't think people want that 
<laughs> let right. me know if you want that. <laughs> let, yeah, let us know if you want if you want some solo videos of, of that. that sounds God. yeah, I've got to stop saying that. that sounds that sounds weird. Uh, mm. If you have enjoyed the stream, do give us a like. We really appreciate all your all your support um, as always. Uh, drop us a comment as well. Let us know your free hit teams. If you've got any fun punts um, going forward. Uh, whether it's free hit or kind of over the next few weeks, we'll be interested to hear them. If you're listening on the podcast, give us a review on whatever podcast uh, app you're, you're listening to us on and we will read all of those. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I should be back next week. God knows who with. Might be you, might be Luke, might be Mark. Yeah. We'll just see, see what happens. Anyone, 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 anyone to do. Um, and yeah, not many weeks left of the season. So hopefully everyone's arrows can continue to be green. Very nice positive end, wasn't it? Yeah, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> cool, Andy, thanks a lot, and I'll speak to you soon. No worries. Bye.